The American High West, an absolute playground for anything in the great outdoors. Whether it be by airplane, by four-wheel drive, or by foot, the High West of the United States does not disappoint. In this series, Miles and I are going to take his 1969 Piper Cherokee 180 through the badlands of Arizona, Utah, and Idaho, while stopping to explore a handful of places along the way. Welcome to part one. The main reason Miles and I planned a trip out west in the first place had to do with Jason Miller from the Finer Points. Jason is a top-notch instructor in the San Francisco Bay Area, and he puts on different courses across the country highlighting survival, mountain flying, and for the first time ever, canyon flying in the American Southwest. Miles signed up for the canyons course, and he asked me to come along as his instructor for the course, so we made plans to head west. This airplane is not your average Cherokee 180. It's equipped with a Robertson Stoll kit complete with stall fences, leading-edge cuffs on the wings, drooping ailerons, and a flat extension across the fuselage. It's no super cub, but it'll get off the ground a bit easier than the average Cherokee. Today marks three days from our departure westbound, and Miles and I are going to run some drills to clean up his traffic patterns, tighten his approaches, nail his touchdown point, and practice some emergencies. I want to place a large focus on always maintaining positive control of the airplane. It's going to be a long day of flying, but of course we can't simply go use the grass runway Atlanta without paying Cooper's Barbecue a visit. What we're going to do this time is we're going to work on patterns and um, a couple of key things is being consistent with your patterns and then once we do a couple of them and kind of see where you are, like the first couple I just want to get a benchmark and get an idea of where you're at as far as like what kind of pattern you fly and then after that I want to start to kind of tighten it up, right? do a little bit tighter patterns and start being more precise with your downwind to base to final turns and right. really utilize energy management to kind of land in relatively the same spot and once we feel good about that then we'll go up to Lano grab some lunch and then after that we'll work on the short soft and stole gotcha stole stuff and when you say tighter just tighter uh... yeah not not like doing a super wide pattern and not necessarily like a like a squared off downwind to base to final it's okay to just kind of you know pull the power back and just kind of keep a turn coming around and almost start doing we'll start doing short approaches right Cherokee 8859 or November San Marcos Tower, runway 13 cleared for takeoff. McLeff closed traffic report and field downwind. 13 clear for takeoff and uh, we'll report downwind 13. 8859 or November. So the original plan was to do some pattern work at San Marcos, then head to Lano for a full stop, then lunch. But trying to do short approaches at a towered field is tough. The tower was quiet when we taxied out, but when we were in the pattern, it got really busy. We couldn't make short approaches because most of the time, tower needed us to extend our downwind for traffic in front of us. So that shot the whole tight pattern idea to the wind. And on the third pattern, I told Miles, let's make this one a bit tighter. But again, tower had us extend our downwind for landing traffic, and ultimately, we had to go around. I don't echo and take it to parking. And then Cherokee 59 November, go around. Go around. Go around, 59 November. All right, Mooney 58, Victor, what did you want, sir? I've never had that happen before. Tower told me to go around. That's why we practice it. 
After that, we decided we should probably stop clogging up the airspace and leave it so the flight school airplanes can have their space. And we departed the area to the northwest bound for Lano. Q5, Lano, Roger, you climb to 45 for the final? A, climb 4500. 500 above Ross altimeters 3002 and squawk 4553. 4553885 This was a fairly warm day in Texas, and you wouldn't believe the amount of overheating issues I was having with the cameras. It doesn't matter what brand, they all do this. I'm using several different brands here. If you're recording on these little action cameras for an extended period in 4K with image stabilization, they get extremely hot, almost too hot to touch. The nose camera died on the leg to Lano because it was in direct sunlight with little ventilation in this Cherokee. On the next flight after lunch, four out of the six cameras overheated, and it was all of the cameras that were exposed to the sun, so bear with me on the lack of shots while we're on the grass runway. Everything, including the Stratus, was overheating. Stratus device is too hot. Of course it is. Shut down if this continues. Where's the Stratus? It's underneath this. Oh. Everything's overheating, man. I'm overheating. Stratus just sh shut down? It's, it's oh, we're gonna find San Marcos. <laughs> I ran countless experiments in a controlled environment before we left westbound to make sure I solved this issue, and with the scientific method and a little engineering, I never had the problem again. Back to the video. Alright, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross uh, the runway, and we're just going to turn right into the right downwind. Right. And uh, remind me pattern altitude? Uh, 2100. 2100, okay. Alright. We're gonna make this a short approach. First notch of flaps. And we're just constantly looking at the runway, checking our airspeed, make sure we're coordinated, all that good stuff. I'm gonna give ourselves a second notch of flaps. And we'll go full flaps. See how this is nice and steep and I'm all, I just need just a little bit of power. Right. To help us out. Traffic jump to the Romeo Bravo, five minute jump call, one zero thousand and below, Gasterville. Alright, and then flaps up. Final traffic, Cherokee 5 9 November is clear of 17 Lano. Okay, so see, you see how that works? Right. So we crossed over midfield and we basically just did almost, it was almost a constant turn. I kind of squared it off a little bit, uh -huh. but we kept it a little tighter. Right. We used our energy management and we came in a little steeper. Right. And, you know, I was just watching the speed, watching the speed, and I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to drop full flaps. Right. And we're going. Manage our speed right around 75 miles an hour is what I was doing. Right. And then turn, and then just kind of, you noticed I gave it a little bit of power kind of in the round out flare, and then just let her settle onto the runway. Right. And when you're doing a landing like that, it doesn't need to be that smooth. Right. I That was luck. Right. <laughs> that, that was lucky. Um, when you're doing like a short field landing or a soft field landing like that, you're just trying to get it on the ground and make a steep approach. So that's what I wanted to kind of demonstrate. Right. So let's go ahead and go around the pattern and, and practice that a few times. Miles is going to go around the pattern twice and practice his own short approaches. Then I'll demonstrate a short field takeoff followed by a spot landing, where the purpose of that is to manage your power and energy to touch the tires on a predetermined spot on the runway. In this case, I'll be using the 1,000 foot markers. Looking good, looking good. That's uh, kind of bleed off. Nice. Little balloon. Nice. That was perfect. That was really good. I'll take it. I just have no brakes over here. Okay. All right, my flight controls. Your controls. You're holding the brakes still. Yep, just tell me when to release. All right, so we're going to go full aft on the yoke. These are up to full power. Full power set, everything looks green. Release. All right, we're release. And we're looking for that nose to come alive. Waiting for that nose to start flying. There it is. I'm starting to feel it come off. Get it just off the ground. And the airplane's off, we're going to stay in ground effect. And start to climb out. And it called for a climb at 65. So I'm going to bring the flaps up to 10 degrees, very gently. Bringing the power back, we're just about to beam our touchdown point. We're in the wide arc. First notch of flaps. We start seeing that speed come down even more. Add another notch. I'm going to start this turn here in just a second. Give that last notch of flaps. 
Lando traffic, Cherokee 59 November on short final, 17 Lando. So I'm going to get down here and I'm going to kind of ride it with power and then we're going to get the airplane pretty slow right there and then I'm going to pull the power out and we're going to kind of sneak up on our touchdown point there. And then on the brakes. Perfect. All right. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. I am starving. All right, so we got some good pattern work in, and we're here at Lano, and we all know what that means, right? We're gonna go get barbecue. <laughs> it's time to eat. That's right. Practice some short approaches, a little bit tighter pattern, and then on that last landing, I demonstrated just kind of shooting for a, a touchdown point and making that touchdown point, and that's what we're gonna practice next, and we're gonna do that after some lunch. All right, so when we go off the, uh, the pavement here, we'll just have wanna keep the yoke all the way back. It'll just take our time, nice and slow. Because we don't really know the exact condition of what that's going to be as soon as we drop off. So we just want to, yeah, perfect, there you go. Just nice and gently. Alright. Lano traffic, Cherokee 590 November taking off runway 13 left closed traffic, Lano. Lano traffic, Skyway 903, 18x rays, now 10 miles of the south. The speed's alive. full stop, Lano. So it's getting light, keep that nose off. There you go. And just level off the ground effect. Gain a little bit of speed. Perfect. And then just let it gently climb up. When you feel good about it, you can slowly take that second notch out down to the first. I think we're looking good. I agree. I basically got power chopped idle. And then maybe kind of favor the right side of that runway. Yeah. Romeo's entering left crosswind for one nine burning. Oh, a little squirrely. A little power, and then just kind of hold it off. A little hard, but that was really good, really good. Your energy management on the in the pattern was awesome. We continued with a few more takeoffs and landings on the grass runway just to get a feel for the different landing surface, and then we headed back to San Marcos to use the painted markings on the runways to get more precise with Miles' spot landings. Yeah, bring it to idle. And just flare, hold it off. Nice! Right in the middle of them. Perfect. Perfect. After a couple of laps in the pattern and a few great spot landings by Miles, we were ready to take a break and regroup before our final flight of the day. What I believe is the most important prep for this trip, which is what we've been working on today. On this third flight, we're going to work on uh, emergency procedures, loss of power. So we're going to go up and work on some practice engine outs, both on takeoff, at cruise, and we're going to practice some more energy management. We're gonna do some power on stalls, power off stalls, and some slow flight. Positive aircraft control is one of the most important things that you can ever master in aviation. There's so many accidents happening lately. People just lose the airplane. Right. It goes into a spin or they, they get they it into a flying. stall. They stopped flying the airplane. It's a real big eye opener about loss of control and maintaining positive aircraft control. And we're just gonna go up and practice some of that stuff. And it's a nice evening, it's cooling off. I don't think I should have an overheating problem with the cameras now. Cooling off, that means like low 90s. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, 93. <laughs> 93 now. And it's 630. Oh boy. Yeah. So anyways, we're going to hop in the airplane and we're going to go practice that stuff. Engine outs, stalls, energy management. What else did I say? Slow flight. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Power set. Engine instruments in the green. Airspeed's alive. The engine quit right now, or would you put it straight ahead? I agree. Caps not available. <laughs> hey, there you go. Do you see how quick it got down to 82? Yeah. Let's bring that power back up. Not very nice. <laughs> I just... <laughs> that was good though. How high do you want to get? I don't know. That was good. That was really good. Not too many good fields. There's one to the right. Ah, uh, okay. So we're 
we're running through our checklist, make sure it's full rich, we got a landing site picked out, we're, we check our fuel selector. So, I'm done running a checklist, let's fly the airplane. I think we'd make it. Alright, you can go around. That was good. I think, um, so there, I think there were definitely places that were closer to us that we could have picked. Right. Um, you know, like, like big houses with big fields and, and stuff like that. But that was, it was very good, very good reaction and maintaining positive control of the airplane. That was really good. Let's do it again. Good. I felt that push. Yeah. Where are you going? What do you think? How about this field behind us? Which one? Right here. The brown one? Yes. Probably this one right here. The green one? Yeah. Or the, the one past it? Uh, the one past it. With the diagonal fence line? Yeah. Okay. I agree. You can go around. I like it. A little fast. I was about 85, 90 miles an hour-ish. What could you do to aid that? Uh, I didn't have enough back pressure. I could have... Uh, if I knew I wanted to make that field, I could have added flaps. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I was asking. Like, right. if you wanted to make that field, right. and you were high and fast, you could add flaps. You could slip. So where's Sam Marcus? There's the airport. I need new instructor. Good. 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 I think I can make that field there. Okay. We can go. You're good. Right. You would make it. All right, good stuff. I like that. Let's uh, climb up a little bit. Quit descending on me, jeez. <laughs> Quit pulling power on me. <laughs> I kept trying to climb, but that's good practice. I haven't done engine out since private pilot training days. We did that engine out drill a few more times and did some air work including turns, stalls, and slow flight to get more comfortable with the airplane at slow speeds. Then we proceeded back into San Marcos for a full stop landing to call it a day of flying. Couldn't have done it better myself. Good job. You juiced the power right at the end and you kind of snuck up on it, and chopped it, whoop, came right down on it. I feel like that's cheating, but it's that's, no, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. We accomplished a lot today, and that's just the start. In part two, Miles and I make the trek from San Marcos to Sedona, Arizona, then over to Monument Valley, Utah, where we'll attend the Canyons of the Southwest course put on by Jason Miller of the Finer Points. We brushed up on some of the concepts I think are pretty important for a trip out west, and Miles even said he felt much more confident in his patterns and stick and rudder flying after today. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss part two of this American High West series. If you'd like to support the channel, you can shop merch and gear at aviation101.com store, and if you want to get access to live streams, giveaways, and exclusive content, you can sign up at aviation101.com slash cockpit club. Links are down in the description. Until next time, I want you to stay happy, healthy, and current, but most importantly, stay proficient. And we'll see you in part two of this American High West series. Fly safe.